So Katie, but let's start with seven, because I think there are a lot of people in this room who are interested in seven. Okay. And we just have seven and 55. Sandy is okay with that. Yes. Thank you. Good morning. And if anyone has sent me an email over the weekend, I had no word for that. So it's been an interesting experience. Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, at your house? They still mm -hmm. they, 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 they severed the line yeah. and they spliced it, and now the, the splice doesn't work. Great. <laughs> okay, so if we could start with the highlighting house changes. Um, that might be the most useful. Yeah. And we've seen this. This is this was posted last week as well. This is what? This was posted last week as well. Yes. Yeah, so I was reading it. We just missed each other. <laughs> there we are. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Okay, so let's go to S7 and start all the yellow changes that were made. Why don't you run through those one more time for us and then we'll Sure. Um, so section one was the section with the um, CMS report and what this language does is ask that a copy of that report come to um, the legislature as well. The date has been changed since it last, last the Senate. It's now coming to the General Assembly on January 1st, 2021. The word behavioral health services, the phrase was changed to mental health services. And then in, um, there's a new clause at the end of that sentence that says, uh, including future plans for the integration of long-term care services with the accountable care organization. Okay. And then there's a new subdivision two that says in repairing, repairing the report, the agency shall consult with individuals receiving services and family members of individuals receiving services. So those are the changes in section one. In section two, this is also a report. This is the report on the integration of social services with the ACO. And again, we had a date change here. Um, I believe when it left the Senate, it was either September or October 1st. And the Green Mountain Care Board asked that it be moved back to December 1st. And then again, that same new sentence was added um, in House Health Care that in preparing the report, the board shall consult with individuals receiving services and family members of individuals receiving services. So let's stop right there. Is, it, is there any concern about anything that you've heard or seen so far? No. Section 2A is the um, budget review for the ACO and there were not any changes made to this section. Section 3 was the responsibilities of the Director for Trauma Prevention and Resilience Development. And again, there were not any changes made to this section. Section 4 was the report um, regarding the Dulce model and the nurse home visiting. And that was deleted in the House. And then um, Section 4 is the effective date and no changes, July 1, 2019. Okay, we do have written testimony from Teresa Wood. Yes. And is that, that was on, and this is why I couldn't access over the weekend, so I'm saying it for the first time. Um, so those, I have it. Okay. Um, would you like me to? Yeah, and maybe Sandy, do you have a, a sense of, um, well, the reason why section four was deleted? in S7 on the, let's, let's see what Teresa says. Okay, okay. that'd be great. So um, section four, uh, HH, HHS deleted section four. HHS appreciated the additional responsibility added to the Director of Trauma Prevention and Resilience Development enacted last year in Act 204. The committee believes that, a, that addition along with the ongoing work of the new position captures the intent of section four without need for an additional report. Perhaps a joint memo from the chairs of Human Services and Health and Welfare to the Director of Trauma Prevention and Resilience Development to emphasize the need to assess the effectiveness of embedding social service provider in pediatric primary care, uh, I think, practices, um, that's supposed to be the word, um, and sustaining a high quality home visiting program could be sent. So in essence, what this is saying is that in section three, the new responsibility 
that was added in this bill for the trauma director and um, director of trauma prevention and resilience development is um, that this person is to serve as a resource and ensuring new models used by community social service providers are aligned with the state's goals for trauma-informed prevention and resilience. And I believe this comment is meant to say that that new responsibility of the um, director would encompass reviewing Dulce and the nurse home visiting partnership specifically. But it doesn't say that right now in the duties. Um, well, it, the duties of the resilience, um, Auburn's duties don't include doing this review. It's just that they're going to happen. The trying to understand. Specific to those programs, correct. But the added language would be that the, per, that the director serves as a resource in ensuring new models used by community social service providers are aligned with trauma-informed prevention and resilience. So there's that responsibility that maybe is broader or pertaining to other programs, okay, but not specific. But it's not specific to primary care, nor is it specific to home visiting. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. So then I'm looking right now at our section four. And it, would you mind just walking us through our section four very briefly sure. so we can see what's being changed and what the request is for a letter? Uh -huh. So if you want to see it um, on your iPads, you can go to the report of the Health Care Committee. I, I, I have. Um, oh, you have as past Senate? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Good. Well, the language is the same. So in section four, we have that by January 1st of this coming year, the Director of Trauma Prevention and Resilience Development and the Director of Maternal and Child Health shall submit a report to the House Committees on Health Care and Human Services and to this committee in consultation with stakeholders assessing the model in which a social service provider is embedded within a pediatric primary care practice and the strong family sustained home visiting programs. Then in subsection B, it says that this report um, is to include recommendations for further development and expansion of the models described in, in A1 and A2, Dulce and the home visiting, in coordination with any proposals for reform resulting from the CHINS review that, were, um, that was conducted pursuant to last year's budget. Okay. So... Sandy, can I ask, Representative Haas, I'm sorry. May I, is it okay if I ask you a couple of questions about the, I'll do my best. So did, how, did you take testimony from folks on the, on the home visiting and the Dulce program uh, expansion that's going on? So we, um, we spent a fair amount of time on that last year, um, and we had a little bit of testimony about it um, when we were looking at um, uh, expanding contraception. Uh, training across the state that we did the following of okay. uh, um, I think um, uh, this was this was a, um, um, a, a, a an amendment from the chair uh, who is very concerned about putting into law things that seem to um, uh, elevate cer certain very specific programs over others. Um, we have been actually quite successful in our committee in doing the letters. So we, as we looked at this, it seemed to us that it would be totally appropriate to ask the trauma coordinator to do what you're asking as part of, as part of her job. Okay, and then in terms of the uh, Department of Health, would you bring any, uh, bring a home center or anything like that uh, to talk did, about the home center? We did not have Rena this year. Okay. Um, okay. Um, I'm kind of ambivalent about the letter. Um, Obviously, we don't have a full cohort here, but we took significant testimony, including from Scott Johnson on um, Johnson. Johnson? Yeah, Johnson. Sorry, on. Um, well, that is his program. Yes. Mm -hmm. that, that, and that, that is the, he has the program, as I understand. But he, no, he's now in a different position, oh, okay. a different a national position for consulting on, on some of the home, these programs. So it's not the same thing. Um, and then the commitment of the um, 
agency to home visiting is very strong. We really need to reinforce that. And then finally, the chins using the um, connecting with the chins review that's going on, I think, is also critical. So, it's our understanding that there were actually several home visiting programs in place around the state. Yes, there are, but the strong family sustained home visiting program is one that I think um, is being evaluated as a pilot, so we probably need to look at that. Okay. So this is the this is the this is the section I think that we work very long and hard on. So we'll have to think about whether or not we want to relegate it to a letter or to have something in the bill. And obviously anything we put in has to go over to you guys today, I would think. Right? Okay, so we'll We'll maybe just have to sort that one out. Is there anyone else who wants to comment on section four or S7 as it currently stands from the house? Okay. All right. Silence means <laughs> something. <laughs> I'm not sure what it means. <laughs> So, Senator McCormick, we, yes, just I went, apologize. we just went through Section 4, yeah. and the, the House, I'm not sure, I, I listened to Representative Hawes, but, I, Hawes, but, I, but I'm, I think that probably... Did I miss your testimony? Uh, this is a different bill. Oh, well. <laughs> this is a different bill. Uh, this is se uh, Section 4 of S7 yes. that they deleted and that we would like to um, consider. Um, I think our testimony might have been slightly different from yours just because of the time that we had to work on the bill and that's pretty standard, <laughs> knowing life. Um, so I'm going to just, I'm going to charge the three of us who are sitting here at the table with Katie to think about um, this section and perhaps there are changes that can be made to it that are less onerous. Uh, for example, she'll submit a report, perhaps it's um, a presentation, and then um, then perhaps um, I think the concern that I'm hearing from the uh, House members and representatives is the notion that we're identifying a single type of uh, embedded practice and that maybe there is um, some latitude and evaluating other types of practices where we get social service and primary care integrated. I think that's what I'm hearing from you. Is that right, Representative Ross? That's one issue. Another issue is for, uh, for the chair in particular who is a social worker is to, is to not medicalize I understand that. I know that's always been a concern. Uh, the um, we did take a field trip, some of us, to um, the Apple Tree Clinic in Stowe, where social services and primary care are fully integrated. Um, it felt more to me like the primary care was embedded in social services. So I think it's also in the eye of the beholder. And the, the whole goal is to integrate the two together, not one over another. So I think that this model actually begins to do that. It's where it sits. I understand that if it sits in St. Albans, if it's sitting in a primary care doc's practice, then people feel as if it's medicalized. The, 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 what we're seeing, though, is that medicine is becoming what is it? Social. <laughs> Socially conscious. So it is a perspective, and I do appreciate your chair's perspective on that. We've had conversations. So. Okay, so let's consider this, and maybe this um, 
we'll, we'll sort out what we can do and what we might want to do in terms of a letter or in terms of a further proposal amendment. Thank you. I appreciate your, your comments. It's very helpful. So good morning. So um, I, I am here to ask um, you please to concur with what we did. I know that it's tempting, given the vote in the House, to think that this was um, a slam dunk, but it was not. Um, we had, last year, when, uh, when this issue came to the floor, we had, we fought for hours. Um, and I, my recollection is that it passed on a party line vote before it was vetoed by the governor. I looked back at the record in the Senate before you sent it to us, and it was very close to a party line vote in the Senate. Somehow, we managed to make just subtle enough changes that we were able to bring our colleagues on board. I actually did not expect it to come out of our committee on the strong vote that it did, given that we had long debates in committee um, about the text of the bill. And what, what I was finally able to do um, especially on the House floor was, was get people to understand that we're really talking about a rulemaking process, that, that what we care about here is are the, are the guidelines for the rulemaking process, which is in itself incredibly rigorous and time-consuming and involves stakeholders and all of that. You know, you know it well. Not all of my colleagues in the House, I think, were so clear. And you will recall that there are really, there are really two, two different um, uh, processes that the working group is involved in. The first one is any, any new chemicals to be added to the list of 66, and of course it's been five years and that number is zero. Um, and then the second la la layer is, okay, I have this chemical in my, in my doll, you know, should, should the doll be labeled um, or should, it, should there be restrictions on sale? That's a, an entirely different process with, an, a, diff, with a different set of criteria. Um, and, and we tweaked all of those. I think we, I think we have a much improved process. We have the, the, the working group now meeting twice a year instead of every other year. We have the working group always being consulted on both the addition of chemicals and, and the other criteria. That was that appeared under the existing law. That that was the commissioner of health's discretion, and we took that away. Um, we also have asked for, in addition, we, we loved the the addition that you made um, that allows the working group to come directly to the legislature. Um, to so it's, it's I see it as as yet another fail safe on the rule rulemaking process. So if something starts to go through rules, and the working group says. Oh, we you know we were really were on board with this, and they can come to us. And given the time that it takes to get something through rulemaking, that's an effective backstop, I think. Um, so you guys did that, and we went along with it. Um, and we also um, supported your um, requirement that they that they make a rule on on how we might have prior notification uh, in the state of, before a product is introduced. And, um, and we tweak the language on that to make it more likely that we'll get something. In addition, we asked for a report because there were, there were members of our committee who, not, who didn't just want to know that chemical X is in the product. They wanted, they wanted the, somebody in the state to say this product is safe. And um, we understand that that's a, big, that's, that's a big hurdle for the Department of Health. So we've asked them to include that in a report back to us in general on how this process works. And, and to make, I don't know if you, if you guys got to visit the website, but we did, we had somebody take us through the website of the reports. It is, to call it user unfriendly would be, would be an understatement. It is, it is almost impenetrable um, for, for people like us whose, whose job it is, and I can't imagine doing it as a grandmother. Like going um, into the store and scrolling on the website and trying to find the, the toy and the whatever. Right, right. Yeah. So we believe. So we believe that what we have right now is a much improved process. Um, I, I, you know, we can argue all day about making it, you know, stronger in this way or that way. But I would really like to see this bill go to the governor, and with a 137 to four vote out of the House, I think that we're probably going to get a bill signed. And so I would like us to do that. So I think that, and, and perhaps you can help us a little bit because I know that the changes that you made. Are, are not unreasonable changes. I mean, you've left the, the UPC code in. Yes. Um, 
and <coughs> the dates have changed because of the time. The including peer-reviewed studies you've added to credible scientific information or evidence. So you did change the word to evidence, and then including peer-reviewed studies but from ours. Not and yours, from yours, yours had peer-reviewed before. Before, yeah, we got it. So, um, and Senator McCormick and I were having a conversation about this, and I, I think it, I think that it. Um, that credible scientific evidence cannot be um, ignored by whomever is using this, um, including peer-reviewed studies. I don't think that we're, are we, are we opening the door, did you talk about opening the door to studies that might be coming directly from a <coughs> chemical producer that well, are. well. Number one, keep in mind the peer review was 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 part of your language. We we moved it around. Yeah. Um, um, of course, of course, we expect manufacturers to have studies, and that's that's the reason for credible, and that's the reason for peer reviewed. Um, that's and that's the reason that they, all all of that gets considered by the group. Okay. And then um, I'm just going through the bill. After consultation makes a lot of sense. We we put that in and we concurred with that. Uh, the commission in consultation with the working group, and then you change the word probability to possibility, which does make sense. Do you did you consider at all uh, the phrase due to the degree of or frequency of? Um, so I believe that we addressed that when we when we added in subsection D likelihood potential and likelihood of exposure. Okay, rather than frequency. Okay, and then the reporting piece. Yeah, notice before sale. That's the report before sale. There's also the allowance for the working group to submit its own information. Is there anything else here that we need to understand um, from your perspective? I do. I, I get. It. I do get it that there was a very strong vote in the house that you've made some modifications that um, help the bill. I, I, I believe you've done that. And I have to be really clear that at this stage in the process, I'm not entirely sure that if there's a change that we would necessarily be able to get rule suspension. As I told you, I was yes. I was surprised yeah. by the strength of the vote and if there's were there were the bill to change, I'm you know, I'm not sure that we would have that kind kind of support. And we don't we don't we can't we can't um, force rule suspensions in quite the same way that the Senate. The Senate's pretty liberal, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> it's just different. It's different. So, I mean, the worst thing, the, the worst thing that can happen is if we provided a further proposal amendment that was not automatically accepted, then it would sit in the calendar. It would. Remember. It would we would yeah. get it out this year. Yeah. Senator. Well, I just wondered if we had uh, credible peer-reviewed evidence that the governor um, would go along with this version. Do you have any Please. sense uh, from the administration? I, 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 uh, all I know is we had a long fight about that in our committee. Mm -hmm. so, I think that's the sticking point. Mm -hmm. You think this is a yeah, I mean, it was. Yeah. We felt we felt that it was really important to not do the same thing we did last yeah. year. Mm -hmm. I'd like some clarity on exactly what we, what the phrase means, including peer review. Does that mean it's a list that has things that are not peer reviewed, but also things that are, and it includes peer review, That's along the, with everything else? That is the concept, yes. That is the concept. Okay. Yes. yes, including, but not, we, as we are taught by legislative council, including means, but not limited to. Yeah. Yes. Because that, I mean, that, well, to a certain extent, no matter what we do, we're going to have to trust the administrators. 
you know, well, the working group to think. And yeah, health. and the commissioner of health in particular. That um, I mean, in my view, if it's not peer reviewed, it's probably not credible. But um, on the other hand, when you're talking about children's safety, uh, maybe it doesn't need to be driven home beyond a reasonable doubt. You don't want the kids near it because it might hurt. I mean, that's usually how we deal with child safety. That's not an unusually right. cautious approach. Right. As a parent, you know, right. I don't need ironclad proof that something bad will happen to my kid. And, there's a, the and there's a trick doing double blind studies with children. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Anything else we need to know? Um, that's what I have. Very good comment. Thank you. So there's one last question on S7. Um, the, as you can tell around the table, we're, we are very strongly committed to that section four that was deleted. And um, so maybe it's a conversation with the chair. She's not around today. She is, I believe she is teaching today. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. All right, committee. Let's start with 25. It seems like it might be easier to look at. Do you want a motion? Yeah. I move that the uh, committee recommend to the Senate that it concur. Yeah, I mean, I'm not thrilled. I, I mean, I like, I feel like this is not quite as strong um, as when we sent it over. And I, it always, it frustrates me a little bit. Can we hold that thought? Sure. <laughs> well, we just had, we were just sitting here with Representative Haas, so and we went through a little bit of S55, but and Senator McCormick made a motion that we concur with a proposal of, from the House. And so we're just in discussion mode, but I want to make sure that we have a chance to ask you any questions. Um, and I think the one question that stands out uh, more than others is on the um, credible, credible scientific evidence, including peer review. And we're trying to characterize what that means. Including peer reviewed, and then what else would stand along, alongside it? Do you want to sit down? Or? Sure. So, um, you know, w one of the examples I, I would think of uh, something that isn't necessarily peer reviewed is, is for example, um, the NIOSH or the EPA list of um, substances that, that have potential to cause cancer. Um, so they, they develop those lists from multiple sources, but they're not necessarily peer reviewed. So if, if the commissioner wanted to rely on one of those lists or a listing of a chemical under one of those lists, I think that this language gives the commission that, that ability. Um, so I, I think that, that that's one example. Um, other examples would be uh, independent, privately funded studies as well. Yes, you may complete yes. your thoughts. Yeah, so, well, I'm just, I mean, it, it does frustrate, frustrate me sometimes when we kind of negotiate with ourselves to try to avoid um, having a, you know, a veto when we don't have any direction. Um, but I realize that this is the nature of the uh, process, and uh, especially at this late date, I think it would be better to have something that, that will sort of reluctantly concur. All right. So, um, and it is legislation. 
Look at how many times has this legislation been in front of us? Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, back again. No, we do not ever want to see it. Yeah, we will. Really, yeah. It would be nice to get it done. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, um, thank you for that. We're. I think we're. I think we're all good on this one. Uh, so we'll we'll pick it upstairs as it is and support it. And I know that there are people in the room who will be relieved that this is going to be going on. You may never see some of you in here again. <laughs> no, that's not You'll true. Be so sad. That, no. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. So okay, pay, so Peggy, may I have a vote? Yeah, yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, our, um, we're, no, we're voting. Mm -hmm. We're going to vote. Where's our vote sheet? Oh, let's see. It's in there somewhere. Yeah, it's in there. Oh, no, there's nothing in there. No, no, there's I forget whether it's green or white. Nothing in there. Oh, shoot. Hold on, let me see if I can find one. Mm -hmm. There are the ones that Kayla had one the other day. She did? Mm -hmm. Yeah. She just reached out there and grabbed it. Yeah, I wanted if that was the last one. Yeah, probably. probably. Okay. Let me see. She, um, so I'm going to suggest that on um, S7 that I, would you the chair of the committee and see if we can get something that might yes. support both of us. I know she's concerned about medicalizing social services, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it'd be great to have some social considerations in medicine, and that's, I yes. think, what we're moving for. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll see what I can do. Okay. And Representative Paz will help me. No. <laughs> <laughs> you do what you do. Right? We'll see what we can get to. Well, so maybe you, are you around a little bit today? I, I wasn't planning to. Since can you hold on for just a bit so we can just chat afterwards? Okay. That be good? Okay. Sandy, did you come up today for the purpose of testing? She did. Yes. Wow. And we greatly yes. appreciate it. Yes. I was absolutely surprised. Yes, yes. dedication. But it was time well spent. I I want to tell the committee to reach You're well spoken. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's just take a vote here. And okay. then, then the yeah. 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 right 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 very good at filling the forms up. Yes. yes. Okay. You want a piece so, of paper? Yeah. 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 Okay. So, um, Senator Cummings is not here. Uh, Senator Ingram votes yes. Senator McCormick? Yes. Senator Weissman is absent. Yes. Senator Lyons. Uh, 3 0. <laughs> Two. Three, zero, two. If we don't put the vote up on this, it's simply the committee first. Okay. Okay. So we're good. All right. So I'll get that up. Cheers. Thank you.